Hi, gang. Today we're going to talk about how to turn a good flat into a great flat. And before we get started, please take a moment to subscribe. Let's talk about this hoodie. It was done by a student of mine recently, and overall, it's not bad. It looks good, it's clean, it's got closed paths, it's well built, and it looks like what it's supposed to be. But it could be better. And this is where amateurs differ from pros. There are little subtleties that we can add to this hoodie to make it really, really beautiful. So let's talk about what those are. We'll zoom in and start at the top and work our way down. So if we take a look at the top of this hoodie, there's a few things that are wrong and most of them have to do with proportion. You can see that the zipper is way too big. The drawstrings in the hood are way too small and delicate for the bulk of this. And the hood, not only is it too small, but notice how it comes together in the center above the zipper. How is the zipper supposed to work where there's no space there? So let's get rid of these elements and replace them with better ones. I just so happen to have made a new hood and this hood is much bigger, so the proportion is a lot better than the other hood. I'll nudge it so it's sitting in the center and sitting on the shoulders. You can see that this one has a little bit of space down here where the hood meets, so there's actually room for the zipper to work. I also added the seam for the neckline and a row of top stitching there so that we could see what's going on and also some stitching around the back neckline as well. Now we're going to need bigger, fatter drawstrings and bigger, fatter eyelets, and here we have them. So let's just go ahead and put these into place. And the drawstring and eyelet's going to sit about like that. Let's pull this down. And this one is going to sit about over here. Already, the proportion is just so much better, and it makes a really big difference. The next thing that we need to do is the right size zipper. So let's grab a zipper pull that is much more appropriate and put that in place. And already, this is feeling so much more professional. As we scroll down a little bit further, I can see that the top stitches are just a little bit too close to the zipper. So we're going to go ahead and select those and just nudge them a little bit further away. And I'm just using the arrows on my keyboard to nudge them out a little further so the proportion and balance feels better. These little um, kind of drape lines here. They're a little small. This would be folding over from higher up and draping more. So I'm just going to select this right here and go ahead and extend it up a lot higher. And again, now the proportion and balance is so much better than the one on the other side. Let's scroll down a little bit further and take a look at this pocket. It's really small. The proportion's just not working for this particular hoodie. So let's get rid of that and bring in a bigger, better one that is going to fit so much nicer here in this space. Now, we can see there's a couple of issues here. One is, let's get it centered. Whoops, hold on. So we'll select this and this and click one more time and we will align center. And we need to nudge this down so that it sits where it should sit. Whoops. But we see there's one more problem, and that is that it needs to be behind the zipper with the way this is drawn, not in front of the zipper. So here's my easy trick to do that. I'm going to select the kangaroo pocket, and I'm going to cut it. Control or Command X to cut. And then I'm going to select the zipper. And then I'm going to paste in back. Control or Command B for back. And it's going to repaste it, but behind the zipper. And uh, unfortunately, I need it to be behind these things too. So I can just use the shortcut key, control left bracket, while this is selected, of course, and move it back a couple of clicks so it sits behind these lines. And we also need to see those stitches. So we'll do control left bracket one more time to get that in place. And now we have a much more proportional pocket. All right, let's talk about this. 
this is not the way ribbing acts, and it's not the way fabric acts when it's sewn to a piece of ribbing. Generally, the ribbing on the bottom of a sweatshirt or a hoodie or anything like this is a little bit shorter than the length of the hem of the shirt, which means the shirt should be sticking out a little bit more, and it should be pulling the ribbing open, which means the lower edge of the ribbing should be tapered in. And in this case, it's, you know, it's, it's angling out, which is not the way it should be. So let's fix that. I'm going to start by adding an anchor point using my add an anchor point tool. And I'm going to add that anchor point a little bit in where I think the ribbing should end. And then I'm going to switch to the minus anchor point tool and I'm going to delete an anchor point at the end so that we get this shape. Now it's a little bit rounded because this piece had been drawn with curved anchor points. So I'm going to grab my white arrow, select this, and we're just going to fix it a little bit. So let's take a look at the handles. I'm going to move this handle in to straighten this out. And I want to move the bottom handle in, but watch what happens when I move it. It is going to mess up everything. So I'm going to undo. And this time I'm going to hold the Alt or Option key when I click on this handle. So it only moves this side of the handle and it doesn't mess with the other part. So I can straighten this out and get the shape that I want. So now that the shape is correct, we have another problem, and that is that the ribbing is not correct. The angle is very, very wrong. Uh, and I see this a lot, and it really bugs me because that's not what ribbing would do. So let's grab our, direct, our selection tool, and I'm going to double click on this to take it into isolation mode, and then double click on my ribbing, which I've created as a dashed line with very skinny dashes. What I'm going to do is switch to my convert anchor point tool and I'm going to change the direction of this so that it angles down on the sides instead of up and I'm making the angle follow the line here on the edge of my ribbing. Now obviously there's a big hole here so we'll grab the black arrow and we'll just move the whole thing down so that it covers. So we'll just select this and we'll nudge that down a few clicks, one more, so that it fits the space. And now I can double click to exit isolation mode. And now we've got ribbing that follows the line of the jacket much, much nicer. So you can see how much better this side looks than the side over here. But there's still one more thing we need to do to make this look right. And that is puff this out just a little bit above the ribbing. So again, I'm going to use the add an anchor point tool to add an anchor point just a little bit above. And then I'm going to use the nudge key, the arrow key, to nudge it out a little bit. And then we've got something that looks much more natural in terms of the way fabric actually functions. So if you look at this side, again, compared to the left side, very different and so much better. And they were such little simple tweaks to make. The sleeve needs the same treatment. This should angle in just a little bit more. I would finesse it a bit. I would definitely curve it in like this just a little bit to give it a tiny bit of finesse. And I would do the same thing on the sleeve, which is add an anchor point and nudge it out using the arrow key. And do the same on the other side. Add an anchor point, nudge it out. And now look at the difference between the two sleeves. This one is just so much more sophisticated looking and it's really showing us what the fabric does. Whereas this one, it falls a little flat. And those are the differences between a good flat and a great flat. So let's zoom back out and take a look at the completed great flat, which I've got over here. Let's turn it on. And you can see the difference is just so much, so much stronger by making those few little tweaks. It makes all the difference. So in the future, when you're working on your flats, pay really close attention to proportion and balance and think about fabric. How does fabric work? And you'll get it right. If you learned something new in this video, give it a like. I'd really appreciate it. And I'll see you next time.